Welcome to this tutorial that will help you transition from classical programming into Fanscript. So I will give five tips that I would like to have the first time I made a project in Fancade. So first off is navigating the editor. So we are in the editor and um, we have the coordinate system. We can drag out blocks like this. Uh, with one finger, I can box select multiple blocks and move them around. With two fingers, I can rotate and zoom. And with three fingers, I can pivot the camera. Also, if you um, have multiple things selected, uh, they will end up down to the left in the panel. So I can make a duplicate of what I have selected like this. That is very handy. Okay, let's trash this. There are, in the menu, you can find many interesting blocks. You can uh, have a chicken that will immediately, then you have something that you can play around with immediately. But I, since I'm a programmer, I want to have something for me more interesting, but actually for most people less interesting, and that is setting a variable. So let's take set number and go into values and pick number. And as you can see, I, I just tap them once. I When I started off, I tried to drag them out all the time. Um, but there's a good reason that you tap instead of drag, and that is you go into the menu and you usually have like a sequence of things you want to do. And then you can um, uh, pick all of the blocks you want, and then they will end up down in the panel. And once you hit exit of the menu, you will then drag them out, which is more efficient. Okay, so now we have a set variable and we have the value of zero. We want to change that. So if I pick the value, then down here, I have the option to change it. So let's pick six and num, I want to call it X. Okay, and now we just drag the cable from here to there. And now we have set the value six to the variable X. Let's hit play. Okay, nothing happens. This leads us to tip number two. Tip number two, I want to call hello world, which isn't exactly true. What I wanna do is I want to uh, print out the value of X here. So if I go into the menu again and under values, I have something called inspect, which is the equivalent of uh, a printout basically. Uh, and we can see that the different uh, colors of the cables on these blocks indicates the type. And in this case, we have a number, which is blue. So I will take the blue one. It's also called inspect number. Uh, and I drag it out. And then I need to have the mm, get variable block or get number block. There it is. And if I hit play now, it won't work because it's the the wrong uh, variable name, so let's say x. And now we have our hello world. Let's go to tip number three. So tip number three is about the execution order. I mean, if I hit play now, I can see that x gets the value six, but in what order is, is the things running really? I, I don't know. Well, Everything is run depending on how you have placed the blocks. So the code is run from left to right, top to down. So if I mark these two and um, duplicate them, and let's put uh, set this value to nine instead. If I hit play now, we will see the value nine. That's because uh, these blocks are these blocks are below these blocks but if I move them around like this now it will be six and also if we take left to right so let's put these ones here and hit play now we have nine again I also want to mention that 
This is also not run only once, but once every frame, and the, it's 60 frames a second, so 60 times every second. And I want to skip ahead to show an example of that. Okay, so uh, this small snippet of code will uh, increase x with 1 and then just uh, inspect x. And as you see, it uh, increases all the time, and that is because, as I said, uh, everything is run uh, 60 times every uh, second. So let's go to the next uh, tip. Tip number four, flow of control. So you, you don't actually have to place everything in the correct order all the time to, to get it to run in a specific sequence. There is also a specific type of cable, the, the yellow one, which will denote in what sequence things will be run. So this is an if statement. And uh, let's take a set variable. Uh, and uh, oh no, that's not what I want. Let's remove that one and take a value and set a bigger value of let's say six. And then on the set variable, we have a before and after. And on the if block, we have um, uh, true, false, and, and before and after. So let's pick the true one and pick to and, and connect it to the before on num. So this means that uh, if the if statement is true, then it will set the variable num to six. So if we just inspect this num and pick the values true and false, close. So if I take true, and uh, you can also, this is a tip as well. I didn't actually explicitly drag the cable. If I just put it next to the the input and output next to each other, it will connect automatically. If I hit play, we will see that num is six, it gets set. And if I remove true and set false instead, it will be null. I can also mention that there are other blocks uh, as the is if block. For instance, we have the play sensor, which um, Uh, has on play, which means that it will run on the first frame. And that is good if you have some stuff that you only want to do once. Okay, let's go into tip number five. This literally looks like spaghetti. So with the four previous tips uh, and by playing around, you can actually uh, make a lot of stuff, a lot of games even. Uh, but uh, pretty quickly I uh, suspect that your code will be pretty messy uh, and, and literally look like spaghetti. Uh, so this is a quick example. I've made some code here that is a control over the, the gray block here will move when I swipe to the left or if I swipe, swipe to the right. And at this point you start to think, isn't there something similar to a module or a function or something like that? And uh, the answer is, there is. So what you can do is that you go into the menu, you go into gadgets, shows the script block, drag it out, press the pen button down to the right in the panel, make new block, block like this one, okay. Then you uh, uh, get into an editor, uh, which where you can design your, your block. Maybe I want it to be purple instead or something like that. Uh, but at this point, I don't really want that, so I'll just press OK. Um, and then next to the pen button, there's a new button. Let's press that one. This button opens up the block so that you can put stuff inside it. So let's uh, select the code here and put it inside and close the box. If we hit play now, won't work. If I swipe, nothing happens. The reason is because I've lost the connection between this object and my code. So what I need to do is I need to uh, set some uh, input cable to this uh, custom block. So let's drag this one here 
and oh, one more time. Like that. So if I close this one down and connect it to the gray box, now it works. And it looks a lot cleaner. Although, of course, inside the block, it's still pretty messy. And I can I could tidy up stuff here quite a lot. I mean, just arranging the blocks in a more logical way would help. I mean, already now it's better, but of course uh, you could do it even nicer. But that's for the, for another time. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's my five tips uh, with things that I struggled a little bit with the first time I made a project in Fancade. And I hope it will help you. And uh, I wish you all of luck uh, creating and building games with Fancade. <laughs>